welcome. Today I'd like to discuss the hundred dollar bill switch. Now this is the original manuscript from Mike Kozlowski. I'm going to reference some of the Michael Marth material on it. But before I do anything, I want you to take a look at my presentation. Now, it's called the $100 bill switch because in, in, in many cases, a performer would borrow a dollar bill or a $10 bill or something like that and would uh, transform that smaller dollar bill into a $100 bill. <clears throat> Certainly a fascinating thing to watch. When I did it, I used a mismade bill. So I would take a regular dollar bill and I would literally turn it inside out. I just enjoyed doing it. My audience enjoyed seeing it. Before I do anything else, let me pause and let you watch that presentation. show you something that uh, hopefully you can all do if you learn how to do it. Can you all see this dollar bill where you are? <coughs> Everybody see that? You can see this is the back side of the dollar bill here. It says one on it. The front side has a picture of George Washington. Now what you want to do with a dollar bill, you can go home and do this. You can try this if you like. Put a nice crease down the middle of the dollar bill so that it's folded in half once like that. Then you want to fold it up in half again this way. And again, put a nice wood solid crease in it. Now you've got it folded into four parts. Fold it in again so that you have a nice tight square. And then you want to give it one last fold. Now if you folded the dollar bill correctly, you can begin to unfold it at this point. There it is. You can begin to unfold the dollar bill at this point. And if you've done this correctly, what will have happened is you've turned the dollar bill inside out, so that the outside and the heat bill are in, and the inside edges of the bill are out. Now, of course, you can't spend a dollar bill that's been turned inside out, so what you need to do is simply reverse the process. You reverse the process by doing exactly what you did before, only in reverse. This time you fold it in, so that you folded it in half. You fold it up again, you fold it in one more time, and then you give it one last fold to make it nice and tight then you can begin to unfold the bill, and if you've done this correctly, you will have turned that bill back into a whole one, and you can spend that bill in virtually any store. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. So, it was based on the Mike Kozlowski $100 bill switch. So, let me just share with you a little bit. The effect is billed as the $100 bill switch for two reasons. The transformation is to a hundred dollar bill and I feel the secret is worth a hundred dollars to the working magician and it certainly is. It certainly is. I've used this thing in close up. I've used it for birthday parties. I've used it for stage shows. I mean I have done a lot with it so I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it and this manuscript will give you everything you need if you can still get a hold of it. I'm not sure that you can but you can get a hold of the magic of Michael Lamar. And, uh, you know, most of us, or many of us, some of us, uh, uh, we saw David Copperfield do this. And uh, he did it on stage, and he did this funny bit where he turns it into a large denomination. He's passing it back to the owner, and the denomination, he, he's saying from the stage, it's getting smaller every time it goes back one person to another. It's a very, very funny bit. If you've not seen it, I'll try to find it and put the, uh, put the reference below so you can see that. But Michael Lamar in his book, uh, The Magic of Michael Lamar, uh, is, is uh, giving some of the history on page 227. He says, Mike Kozlowski caused quite a stir during the late 70s, and I think this was published 1977. So I was uh, a junior in high school, right? So uh, it was published in the late 70s. Mike Kozlowski caused quite a stir during the late 70s when he published his $100 bill switch. I remember getting his manuscript as soon as it came out, and I immediately added the effect to my show. 
when the local newspaper reviewed the dinner theater show I gave at the, at the dinner theater in 1978. The accompanying photo was one of, my, one of me performing the $100 bill switch. Uh, since that time, I have, been, I have seen many magicians perform the technique, and I even printed Roger Klaus handling an Encore 3. Uh, and then he references here turning the bill inside out, and he goes on to give you a much more detailed history, and also a completely illustrated uh, handling of the effect. So, most, most of the people that do the effect do it with currency. They're either turning a dollar bill into a hundred dollar bill, or they're turning a dollar bill inside out, or they're, uh, in some cases, tearing a dollar bill and restoring it. You can do all those things. But I want to show you something a little bit different. And I'm going to show that to you right now. By the way, before I do that, um, what I want to show you was based, based on, it's not from, it's based on this book called Bizarre, The Surreal Sorcery of Tony Doc Shields. Uh, this is one of my favorite books. I just adore it. He publishes a routine in here called Casting the Runes. Casting the Runes. And uh, it, it's, it's dramatically different than what I'm about to show you. But he does provide the, uh, the sketchings uh, that, that I use in this particular presentation. So I wanted to reference that book. Uh, if you don't have it, this thing was published in 1998. I believe it's still available, but it's really worth picking up. It's a great book. I, I have performed several routines that I've gotten out of this book, so it's, it's a dandy. Anyway, let me pause for a moment and, and show you this effect. Okay, so this is a slightly more close-up view of this thing I want to show you. So there was this man who lived in a small town in Ireland. We've all seen these types of people. This guy was a skeptic about everything. He didn't believe in the Banshee. He didn't believe in spirits. He didn't believe in leprechauns, and he certainly didn't believe in God. So the people of the village knew that the Banshee hung out in the moors and said to the guy, don't go through the moors on your way home. But out of spite, out of ridicule, out of whatever you can imagine, he decides to go through the moors after midnight on his way home. As he's walking, he hears things behind him. He hears twigs breaking. He's thinking maybe, but in his mind, he's sure that it couldn't possibly be. So he goes on walking and walking. And the banshee gets closer and closer until eventually the Banshee overtakes him, holds him down on the ground, and screams at him. The Banshee screams. He never forgets that night. Oh, the Banshee didn't kill him. Oh, no, 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 the Banshee didn't kill him. But the Banshee put the fear of God in him, and he never again questioned, and he was never again a skeptic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I just, I did that for one purpose, and that was to illustrate that you can take a magical principle and you can apply it many, many different ways. You don't have to turn a dollar bill into a hundred dollar bill or make a dollar bill go inside out. You can use the same principle in many, many different types of applications. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. Comment. I love your comments. Thank you and have a great day.